nice. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Artist Block. This is a, an abbreviated series that I'm working on. Um, this is actually not the true successor to the Artist Block um, number four that we were working on the other day. Or a month ago. It's been a while. I've been busy. So, what's what are we going to talk about today? So, um, I got a request to speak on muscles. I don't know uh, if you guys have seen my art, but I do a lot of muscle work, and that's primarily because of the influences that I have in my life. I'm a big fan of uh, shonen anime. I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, like, and all of those anime and all of those shows that I watch. A lot of them require muscles. <laughs> they draw a lot of muscles in those shows, and I uh, started drawing those since I was a little kid. Granted, they weren't good back then. I've only recently got good at drawing at this point, so this is something that's actually normal. You're not going to be, you know, the best at drawing muscles right out of the blue unless you're, you know, a savant. Usually you're not going to do that, but that's okay. We're going to uh, kind of go over a quick overview of muscles. So uh, this was a request from someone. So if I don't do so well, <laughs> don't, uh, don't, 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 don't hate me. I'm doing my best here. Okay, so I got a picture. And I'm going to pull up. Here it is, right here. So uh, we got some muscles here, it seems. Um, let's get a quick in. Now, when you draw muscles, a lot of the time you have to understand, you know, the general anatomy of a person. You know, how does one muscle correlate to another? You also have to understand bone structure because you can't just uh, plaster muscles onto something. Sometimes you got to be able to understand the joints overlap. And even looking at some of these uh, figures here, you can see that the muscles. Uh, cohesively go into from one point to another and make the body full in fact that's where you get a lot of your contours and a lot of your value changes from the concave or convex forms of muscle of muscles on the body so you often see it in situations like we can go down here right you can see that uh, certain parts like you see right here is like a dark part and then you go up into the muscle and then it pulls out and you have a whole lot of things that work out and each muscle is its own little thing right um when you think of muscles you can always think of blocks or circles um muscles aren't like this right they're not blocks that's actually that's a hold on, hold on. that's actually a pretty good uh basis to start it off but as you can see once you get good enough to draw muscles you can eventually get pretty far into that uh field but muscles are basically just blocks or I guess you can consider them more trapezoids if anything. Um, anything organic usually you would consider as a rounded figure. You wouldn't exactly have these as straight blocks. And you could see even here that the muscles are rendered in a way that whether or not actually, they're not actually uh, blocks, but they're not actually circles either. So you can see that it's like a rounded edge here, a rounded edge here, a rounded edge here. And it depends on how you draw muscles. There's different ways to draw muscles or uh, making things work. You can see here that they have like different examples of abdominal muscles, your six pack, you got your eight pack, it's your 10 pack, I think, four, six, eight, 10, 10 pack. Pretty good, right? Pretty cool. But uh, drawing muscles is different depending on how you're gonna draw them, depending on what you're looking at, depending on what model you may be using. Maybe you're using a female model instead of a male model, or maybe you're using a beast instead of, instead of a person. Those things all factor in how you work on muscles. So we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna have a quick overview. Now, how do I draw my muscles? Um, this will be something that I'll show you real quick, something that's actually, you know, something that I do my natural warm ups. So I start off with my heads, of course, because you gotta always put the head together. You gotta understand where the head is on the body. And there we go. That's a basic head. We don't have to do too much with that. Now, when you're drawing, um, cartoons or if you're drawing things like that you can get kind of wacky with the proportions right and you can see how one thing may correlate to another as far as the design and muscle is actually a really good way of defining a person or an archetype in a field so if I were to draw a character like I'm gonna zoom out real quick if I were to draw a character with big with a big hulking neck right and I drew that and his muscles like his muscles are like this or better yet let's actually uh, <laughs> make this bigger there we go, let's put that like that. If I were to make him to the point where like his, he has virtually no neck, right? And we have people in this world that are basically neckless. But you could see 
that like just this kind of thing alone you could tell how imposing this person might be right and i'm just drawing you know making a little gesture drawing of how it could look but as you can see this person is you know there's no joke about this person you're you're giving them one heck of a one heck of a physically imposing appearance just by adding musculature and already just like that we have muscles now there's different muscles that you can work with so i don't know definitions or names but we'll go over things like that so let's start with the basics so once again i'm gonna draw a head let's do this come on there we go let's go ahead and draw a head again like that okay so we have you know not just muscles we also have bone and other things like that these kind of things create you know the body and you see I'm gonna go ahead and start with the neck now normally you start the neck pretty you can make your necks you know shorter or longer and the muscles correlate right so we can start off with like you know the structure of the neck we can get things like this and you could add a little bit more you could add some value to it just to for the heck of it right I'm gonna lower my uh, the I'm gonna lower the size of my pen just to make it a little better and you can see that already we're having a pretty decent person the neck is about average average um width probably and you can play with the correlation of body parts now when it comes to muscles your correlation between you know the shoulders and the neck and everything like that you can emphasize a character's personality or their physical appearance just by you know tweaking some features and you can make them more abstracted or more uh, I guess you could say more gestural something that's a little bit more uh, or rather a little less realistic and people do that some people will do that so like for instance uh, let's go ahead and work on this one here so here's a guy with a muscle with a neck let's go ahead and give him a face we're gonna go ahead and uh, fix him up something so we can actually use him we're gonna go ahead and uh, focus on this guy. We'll just give him some general, basic, some basic uh, features. You know, let's give him, give him a face, and let's make him bald. Let's keep him bald. So he's gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and do that. And voila, we have our little guy. Let's uh, fix this up just a bit. Ah, there we go. Uh, let's give him some ears to work on. Okay, and here we have some ears and some other stuff. And you can already see we have some nice definition going on with some um, things like his neck and everything. And you can see that the, um, the structure, depending on how you work with it, um, can change, it can fit to the body. So let's start with the, um, I forget what these muscles are called, the ones on your shoulder, that are to connect your shoulder to your neck. Uh, that's important for you know um, upward movements and moving your shoulders around because you can't use your it's kind of like an elastic band it can uh, if you cut this uh, neck muscle right here between your shoulder and your neck you wouldn't be able to move your arms around like talking about it because this kind of acts to pulley so you can let's go ahead and start putting that on there right so these muscles you can start placing in muscles kind of like blocks because that's what they kind of are like I said before they all fit together so as you can see here, we have our little the uh, we have our guy here, and you can see that you can even add definition to the muscles by you know making um, value and stuff like that. So we already have these muscles, and you can see that we are just adding shapes. We're not going to do too much to that. Um, we're only going to do so much. So let's uh, scale him down a bit. Bring him up here. Work on the next muscles, the shoulders. The shoulders are what you can add on to this next because the shoulders make out the frame of the upper body, right? Because they're at the top like this. And you can make them as small as you want. You can make them down like here. You don't have to be too wide out. Or if you want somebody with broad shoulders, you can slope them out a bit more. We're just gonna do an average build. So we're gonna erase that right there. Probably erase it a little bit more because that's actually pretty broad still. And then we're just going to uh, focus on that. So. Shoulders are built kind of like, what's the right way to describe it? Um, shoulders are kind of built like this. So if you see a shoulder, oftentimes you see a shoulder and you might see a mus muscular shoulder, they're built kind of like this into the body. You can make a shoulder uh, 
you know, defined just by kind of giving it that definition that you're looking for just like that. Also, keep in mind too, if you're doing a, a, a woman's shoulder or if you're doing a man's shoulder or whatever, the musculature changes depending on how you're applying that muscle to a certain figure. And of course, you know, usually when we have men or women, women are usually not as considered as not, they're not drawn as muscular as men. They usually have a softer uh, physique to them and men tend to have more angular and chiseled physique depending on how a man would exercise or whatever. General term being that your average male would be a little bit more blocky than a, than a woman. So keep that in mind when you're working with your with your muscles because that is something that's pretty important. Um, and now we move on to something that's pretty important too. This is the correlation between collarbone and the uh, pectoral muscles and the uh, chest region, the chesticles. <laughs> so when you work on uh, muscles at this point, you also have to keep in mind that the bone structure does impact things so um where the bone is is not where the muscle is because usually you have your heart ridge bones like the collarbone which is a lot more or the clavicle which is what it's technically called and those bones are actually you know these are these bones are more pronounced than other bones not like ribs or spine usually those kind of bones are usually predominant right and you also have your bones like you know the femur and the uh, radius, the radios, the fibia, tibia, all the other stuff like that. The stuff that you can't really see, but are fleshed out with muscles to give them that form. So let's start off with this. Now, when I work on my uh, muscly guys, muscles have a tendency to, I guess you would consider it separate because muscles, when they're built up, they are segmented they're not part of a sim singular system if you look at a bodybuilder you would see that um you might see in anime that you have a body like this right and you might have somebody along that line who is built like this and that's a thing right so this is one line down you could draw simple muscles just like that well in actuality the pectorals aren't actually uh together they're separated so what you would what i usually draw my muscle characters like i draw them based on the pectoral and the, uh, sorry, not the pectoral. I draw them based on uh, the collarbone uh, change and, you know, I just do it like that. And the, uh, the, these pectoral muscles actually go into, uh, they go into the shoulder and it forms a curve. It doesn't do, uh, doesn't do anything weird like this or whatever, but it kind of just kind of forms into the shoulder and then the shoulder kind of just defines itself out on the outside that kind of that makes sense um and then you can add some accoutrement like let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh keep moving with this but you could see it you could add like the nipples would be on the side here uh, and then for stuff like that if you want to make a muscular character um muscles are actually made out of fiber so a lot of times um the more cut a person is the, the less sometimes it depends on the uh the water content in the body you can get a lot more musculature showing so if you wanted like you know entice more muscle uh or look like there's more muscle you could always you know add those uh those those hints of fiber that'll actually give you that look that you're looking for so say for instance as i say for all intents and purposes right i'm doing this so let me do that whoa <laughs> didn't want to do that okay so we got our boy muscular here and uh let's just say i wanted to add a little bit more detail to that chest and the chest usually has um, some form of muscle to it. So for one, let's go ahead and let's add some detail. Hold on, there we go. Add some detail to the chest first and foremost to symbolize that this right here is where the muscle actually begins. Technically, you can cheat a little bit and put the, the pectoral muscles together with the, with the clavicles, and they would kind of make sense. But in actuality, they kind of separate. The, the bone is one thing, and the chest muscles are two different things. Just something to keep in mind if you're working on this. Okay, now let's see. So we got this here, and we want to make him a little bit more built. You can simply add a couple of uh, strands like this because muscles are made of fiber, and the more fibers that are showing, you, uh, let me see, the more fibers you're showing, and the more taut the muscle is, the muscle is going to pull, and those fibers are gonna, you know, be more defined. 
you actually see this in you see this in in daily life if you have somebody that's pretty muscular or maybe they can flex their pectorals or if they can flex their bicep and you see the rippling of the muscle that's the fibers hardening and forming um, those solid uh, forms that you see normally okay that was a pretty long explanation but you know has to work right and so we can change this and make it smaller still let's build them up here there we go all right we already got somebody that's pretty muscular he's pretty strong looking so let's work on neck the next part i like to work inward depending on the depending on how the uh, composition goes you don't want to work in the same place um forever because you won't at first you won't get it done if you finish one thing you rent fully render it out you could pull it out and look at it and it would be like this looks horrible because you stayed so busy on one side it doesn't look good in any other place oh excuse me Ugh, okay Whew. all right sorry about that all right and then we can work on the um other parts of the pectoral muscles which are the this you know so we can actually work on the, the waist and everything now keep in mind naturally the body doesn't have a naturally thin you know waist let's actually fix this so because this actually should look like this there we go now the body would naturally not have you know super thin waist and actually the body would probably have a waist more along the lines of this level but you usually see bodybuilders with weight train or waist trainers to make their uh their instead of looking kind of like this you know look kind of like that look kind of like this look like doritos they're built like this usually this isn't what a body would look like unless you're actually naturally born that way but a lot of people wear weight trainers or waist trainers sorry to um fit their body fit their mold so when i draw this next part i tend to angularize the hips because the hips for a man are a lot more angular than a woman so I'm actually gonna do like this. Let me fix this just a bit. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. And you can work on the uh, abdominal muscles and the obliques and the rest. So let's start on the abdominal muscles. Now, um, one thing to keep in mind is you wanna kinda understand how the ribs work in order for this, this next process. So what I often do is I often put where the ribs would end, which is around this area. The ribs tend to end somewhere in this particular Field. So I'm gonna go ahead and put lay in the muscle for this part here. See, um, some of the muscle anyway. So nothing crazy, but just enough. So you can see that this is kind of where the muscle starting in. You have your bones forming, your ribs forming in this general area, and where you see the you know the chunk of the stomach. That's usually where your entrails are, and uh, this is where your abdominal muscles really shine. So normally you see the muscle, the abdominal muscles kind of forming this kind of cohesive uh, natural uh, arc, I guess it would be an arc or an arch that goes from the ribs and it naturally forms that little shape. And you can usually see the rendering form in this general area right here, right? And you could put this little circle in, this little um, circle in like this kind of, you could do that. And then you could further um, separate it by just working on like a line. And this line usually is good enough. Now, from here, you can work on the rest of the body. Let's start on, let's go back to the other parts. Let's work on the arms. Now, when you work on the arms, uh, one thing to do that's of note, uh, the elbows, pay attention to the elbows, because the elbows will give away how long a body is. Usually, where the curve of the, uh, the curve of the beginning of the hips, so in this general area here, that's often where the elbows are gonna end. So let's go ahead and pull that in muscles tend to over interlock like chains so you can always do it like this and then you can do another one like this and you can see i'm not gonna do the other arm because i don't have to <laughs> sounds bad but you don't have to to be honest uh because it's just a demonstration right so from there um the muscles do some interesting things so I'm looking at this right here, right? And I'm going to uh, explain what I just did. So basically I just made one, I made a sausage, kind of like, kind of like, kind of like this, right? I made a sausage or an oval for the technical. And this oval uh, is actually really cool because the oval uh, is pretty much, it's kind of like, a, it's basically a cylinder. 
Um, you could make it a cylinder if you're just gonna do it like this. Oh, look at that. I turned it into a 3D realm. Isn't that cool, guys? This is actually gonna be the next... I'm gonna work on this kind of thing in the next true artist block. But for now, I digress. So, here are your muscles for the, uh, the, the upper, for the, uh, for the arm, upper arm. Now you got your uh, tricep back here. You have your, uh, bicep. I think that, I don't know what the other muscles. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, uh, do this and give it some, some, uh, some texture just by giving it, you know, this. Like that. There we go. And give it some texture. You want to give it some, uh, give it some depth by giving it some hatching. Let's look for that video next too. So we're just gonna do that. Now, when I did this, you can always do it like this, like this. And keep in mind, if you keep in mind the two bones in the uh, in the arm, in the forearm, there's the radial and the ulna. I think it's called. The radial is what actually allows you to turn your arm. And then there's the ulna, which is a stiffer one, I believe. I don't know that. I think that's. I think that's the right arm, the term for it. In any case, um, the muscles wrap around. So the ulna is the flatter side. So this side would be the ulna, and then right over here would be the radial. The radial. The radial. Um, if you ever notice it, uh, if you put your arm out in front of you and uh, put, turn your palm up. You could see that the uh, that the radial is on your. Let's just say if it's your right arm, the radial radial will be facing out towards the right, and the ulna will be inward facing to the left. And you could see the contour of the forearm muscle. You could see that it uh, makes this general you know swoop, and then it goes tucks in, and then it makes your thing. And that's basically it for the forearm muscles. So that's how we do it for that. And you can see that we have a pretty interesting uh, composition for our uh, for our character so far. Um, we're gonna work on lower legs, lower body in another video uh, because it's getting kind of long. So I'm gonna finish this up by doing the abdominal muscles. And how I do abdominal muscles are pretty simple. So I work on abdominals. Oftentimes I start off with the base. And like I said before, muscles uh, are actually sometimes tend to, you know, separate. So often do it like this. You don't have to do too much. As a matter of fact, if you do something called, uh, if you do this and you kind of separate it a bit, you can get the basic idea with closure. And if you don't know what closure is, just you see closure all the time. Closure is just kind of like, you know, uh, closure is understanding that something is there, even if it isn't. You know, that's what closure, it's closure basically refers to. So I'm gonna do, for all intents and purposes, we're gonna do a six. So we're gonna give him a belly button right there. And we're going to finish it off with a nice, uh, what a rice, what a nice, what a rice, what a nice finishing touch here. And we're going to go ahead and block in his hips like that. And there we go. So you, as you can see, we've actually done a pretty decent job with the muscle anatomy, and you know, based on how you uh, how you work, these body types and changes can be made to accommodate any figure as long as you you know following simple guidelines, and you play around with it. Um, a man doesn't have to be angular in order to be you know what they are. A woman doesn't have to be soft and you know, uh, less muscular. You can add those features to make something more interesting than you normally would. And a lot of people do do that. And that's actually something that's pretty cool that a lot of cartoonists are starting to do a lot more now, you know, giving body types to other people or other creatures to make them uh, better. And I know that that's what I like seeing. So that's something that's really cool. So one more thing before I let you guys go, I'm going to show you the obliques. Obliques are pretty easy, actually. Um, we can go back here. You could actually see, you know, bodies forming the obliques would be these muscles here right here these are the obliques really easy to do oh, 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 oh. oh bad oh bad all right real easy to work on right uh obliques you could just you just kind of kind of give them one of these give them one of these give them one of these okay and as you can see you've already kind of formed some definitions so i'm just gonna go ahead and finish that up by giving it the highlights that they so desperately need so I'm gonna go ahead and give it everything it's needing we're gonna go ahead and we're going to uh, 
Do that. And presto changeo, we have a much more muscularly defined body than normal. And I want to check something. I'll make sure I'm doing this right. Yes, I'm, I am. So, uh, last thing I should say is that the muscles tend to cut in like this for the human body. So, when you're finishing the lower section, they tend to, uh, you know, dip in something like that to make that prominent V that everybody likes seeing. You know, the, the deep V like that. That's what you usually get when you take uh, the last part of the upper body and, you know, those last abdominal muscles and you push them down into the groin area. Okay. Um, and so that is basically what we're doing for this. This is our upper body. Let me go ahead and write that. Don't need to do that, but here we are. Assign it. There we go. And voila. There he is. Here it is. Eh? So this is the kind of process that you would go in. And of course you would go in and line it however you do it naturally. You do that as your normal your normal setup. So you would do, you know, your sketches and then you would do your line work. You could render it with color or you can render it with, you know, general hatching, cross hatching. The world is your oyster. So now that I've done this, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of examples of upper body uh, muscles and stuff like that. So bear with me. Um, I'm gonna cut to it. So give me one second. Okay, so here we are. We have some extra stuff that I can share with you guys. These are just some examples of uh, muscle muscles and how they work in correlation to the body and creating a character and stuff like that. So this is what I usually do. I usually do my figurative work. So ignore the 18 plus. We're gonna <laughs> get rid of that. All right, there we go. So. You can kind of see a similar development for my characters here. This is actually my uh, persona. This is Volkner. Uh, he is a very muscular character, so I draw most of my muscles for him because he's super muscular. And as you can see, looking at his body, you can see that the, uh, the different uh, muscles are actually, you know, they define the character by making him certain, uh, you know, making him a certain builds or what have you so let's take a look at the whole general muscle so going back to our illustration that we have here you can see there's a lot of things that are similar in nature a couple of things that are maybe done a little bit different like maybe the uh, rendering of the muscles here the use of color instead of the use of the line to make the emphasis of uh, force and motion and you can see how that affects the form and the figure so you can see that this is one way to do it. Um, I use a rougher brush for this, because I use a uh, heavier color to make that, uh, make that, make that pop a little bit more. And then we have this one. This one is one of my personal favorite pictures that I've worked on. And this is a good use of using both line and color to create, um, to create a seamless picture especially with the musculature. So looking at it, I actually used it multiple different techniques. I used um, that brush that I use normally, uh, and then I also used an airbrush to kind of make these softer strokes. And you can see that there's some line work too that is made to uh, create a uh, broader sense of, you know, muscle. And this is what you'd probably see in something like an anime or something like that. You'd see these uh, muscles being rendered, but not only just um, in some way, you know, shading or whatever, it would be airbrush or the like. And if you see it in anime, you usually use cell shading to make it real simple. That happens too. So there we go. There's this one. Now, I was talking about women and uh, or female characters and changing those, uh, you know, those musculature structures to fit a character's personality disposition. So here's an example of that. So this is Yijira. She is an elk. I believe she's an elk or she's a, she's a, a yak, the yak, I think. And uh, I, ha I have her for a comic that I'm working on. Uh, and she is actually, um, she's you know, known as Yijira Skull, Yijira Skull Crusher because she's super strong. You can see that her body is still has a lot more she's got she's broader than your average uh, female character and you can see that you can see that she's got a big sword and that kind of thing it accentuates her form and accentuates her personality just by having these um these muscles you can just see how big her her biceps are it's like she killed she crushed my she crushes heads 
Her name is Yidra Skullcrusher. Of course she would. And you can even see like how powerful her thighs are. Her thighs and uh, her thighs and calves would be, and how strong they'd be. But we're gonna get to that in another video because it's getting kind of long. And then we have something like Charlie. Charlie's a little bit more, you know, um, I guess you would consider it a little bit more uh, feminine in the uh, build. Uh, she is a lot more. Uh, she's a lot more petite, and she's only she's. I mean, she's of average height. I guess she'd be around five six or whatever. And this is actually a character from my one of my uh, worlds. She is um, really muscular, and I didn't draw it on here, but she has a scar going across. So you can see that, like you know, you can also use clothing to accentuate those muscles or to make an absence of muscles. Like some characters uh, will hide their muscles under, you know, a cloak or something, and then when they take it off, everybody's like, "Jesus Christ, is she stacked?" And that's a good reason why. So this is just one example of you know me working on. Uh, characters and giving them personality based on only their, uh, you know, not only, but based on their appearance and muscles help with that. And I got one more picture and this one's actually really fun. So this is, um, if you remember him, remember him, this is actually my Sona's sister, his, uh, his twin. Uh, this is when she, this isn't what she looks like normally. Actually, I updated her design. This is actually 2018, if I remember correctly. And uh, this is a request that I did for somebody, one of my friends actually. And this is a, uh, this is my alternate name up here, Yogarax. Look at that. Ah, good times. But um, you can see that she still has, you know, these musculature, muscle fig, muscle figure. This actually is anatomically incorrect. I don't know what happened here, but uh, it. You zoom out, you actually don't really notice it a whole lot until you get a little bit closer. You're like, oh my god, her neck is strange. But you can see that uh, she's built. She's huge. She's actually seven foot six. <laughs> and she's built like a tank. And she runs like a tank. She's fast and she'll run over anything. And you can see that you can portray even attitude with, uh, with just a simple gesture. So these things that you're learning with these with muscles or with any form, which you know, the skeletal structure, understanding how something moves, all these things are really important to create a seamless and cohesive world or character that would be believable if you make it. So word of advice, you know, practice, practice, practice these things if you're gonna work on them because it takes a lot of skill, it takes a lot of practice. And even if you're, you know, naturally talented, you still don't want to you still don't want to do something that's so disproportionately unbelievable that it just doesn't work so that's my advice anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial this little uh look through we're going to talk about the legs another point in time i really appreciate you guys don't forget to like the video comment and subscribe let me know what you guys think about this if you guys have any questions or anything like that, that i could probably answer or i could direct you to if I can help you out, I'll definitely will. But until that, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off here. It's videos getting kind of long. So thank you all. I'll see you guys another time. Take care. Peace.